Hello, everyone. This is George Diaz, and today I am speaking with Adrian Savage. Adrian, how are you today? Hey, I'm great, George. It's great to see you. It's been a long time. Yeah, no, it has been. So um, we get the question all the time. Matter of fact, more so in the last couple of months of people going, hey, my I don't think my emails are getting delivered or people will come up and send me an email and it ends up in my junk folder or you know, spam folder. And, you know, things have changed a lot in the last couple of years. Google and, you know, all the other email players are, are changing the way they do things. They're trying to keep spam to a minimum. They're trying to keep everyone safe, so to say, from nasty emailers. And I thought I'd bring you on, given your expertise, to kind of explain to people, here's how it works. Here's the kind of things you want to avoid awesome. and, and just kind of dispel myths, because I know there are plenty of them. Um, why don't you start off by you know introducing yourself, tell people a little bit about your, your background, because yeah, you are sure, the expert, sure in my opinion. So, yeah, so the potty history, I've, I've been a geek since I was about seven or eight years old when, when my dad brought home an Apple II computer. So I've been an Apple fanboy for about 40 years now or something like that. Um yeah. And got into email marketing about 11, 12 years ago now and very quickly got sucked into the email deliverability side of things because, you know, being a bit of a geek, I like digging down into the techie stuff and having a bit of an eye for detail and things like that. And lots of clients were starting to struggle getting their emails through. They were going in spam, they were going in promotions, whatever. Um, so I just started digging deeper and deeper to learn everything I could about the subject. Um, so I've progressed from being a kind of fairly generic marketing automation guy. I've been a keep certified partner for 10 years now and now just focusing purely on email deliverability which is pretty much helping you avoid the spam folder with the emails that you're sending and get as many emails into the inbox because let's face it everyone wants to get more emails seen by more of their audience so they can make more sales that's what this is all about no right and, and email is still a wonderful way to you know connect with people promote yourself make people aware of what you're doing Totally. Uh, but it's not like in the past where as long as you kept people from hitting that, hey, I don't want this guy, this guy's a spammer, and you kept it under 1%, you know, 1 per thousand, you were safe. Now, I mean, the rules have totally changed. Yeah, and I think that's the big challenge. I still come across people who are marketing like it's 2012, and they're still, you, you know how it used to be, you know, you built the biggest list you could, and then you just spam the hell out of it, and you keep mailing people and mailing people until they buy, they die, or they unsubscribe. And some people still do that, and they wonder why they're getting bad results. Yeah. So, yeah. It or or wondering why they're being stopped by their provider, right? Yeah, their provider saying, hey, we're going to knock you off our system. Very much. And the thing is, the world of email evolves all the time even between now and a year ago the rules are changing because you know let's face it google are the biggest mailbox provider in the world they control between 50 and 80 percent of a typical email list so if you've got ten thousand people on your email list there's probably going to be five six seven thousand of those people are going to be going to an e a google mailbox so we've got to follow the rules that google state and they publish most of them but not all of them and just to make life worse Google have invested millions in AI, in artificial intelligence. So Google probably knows more about your emails than you do yourself. And they definitely know more about what your audience are doing with them. So if you're sending out garbage that nobody likes, Google are going to spot that and they're going to instantly slap you on the wrist and start sending all your mails to spam. So it's really important that you keep on top of what's happening because, you know, and something we mentioned before we hit the record button is there's this years, you know, it is it's years and years old this myth that if you switch to a different email marketing provider you're going to get better results but the things that we're talking about here it doesn't matter whether you're using mailchimp or active campaign or keep or hubspot or whatever you're using all of these platforms have great deliverability they are all good at getting the emails delivered the problem we've got now is that the rules have changed and what google and microsoft and yahoo and all these other mailbox providers that we send emails to they're looking at the reputation of your sending domain. So they don't really care where the mail comes from. As long as you're using a platform that's reputable and that everyone's heard of, then you're going to be okay there. So you know, don't spin up your own little email server on a little internet connection somewhere because that ain't going to work. Which is which is what would work very well, you know, five six years ago, right? Yeah, ab absolutely. You know, but unfortunately, that's what the spammers started doing. So guess what? That doesn't work so well anymore. And and you've mentioned this already. We we have to stay one step ahead of the spammers, and we have to not look like a spammer. That's the that's that's the biggest thing. So, you know, all these email platforms, they do a great job and occasionally they will all have a blip. I mean, you know, I've worked with people on all these platforms 
And I don't know of a single platform that hasn't let someone down in the middle of a launch at some point, because let's face it, everyone gets unlucky sometimes. Right. And, you know, the good news is that isn't a common thing. You know, occasionally there'll be a glitch, but on the whole, these platforms are really good, really solid. And what matters the most is just how you are controlling them, what you are sending, when you're sending it who you're sending it to, what it looks like, all this kind of thing. And these are the new rules of email that we got to follow. And this is why, as much as possible, I try not to use the word deliverability because it does kind of confuse things. First off, it frightens people away because it sounds like this rather techie thing. There's all these bits you've got to do, which well, maybe, but there's other stuff that you can do as well. And also deliverability is always someone else's problem. You know, you go, you go on Facebook and you see people saying, hey, I think that MailChimp has got bad deliverability. Well, I've got some news for you. No, they haven't. The problem is down to what you're doing as a sender. If you're getting poor open rates, if lots of things are going to the spam folder, it's probably because of what you're doing, not because of the platform that you're using. And that's the thing that matters the most. Yeah, okay. So so rule number one, don't try to blame it on your provider. Moving providers isn't going to change things, especially if you exhibit the exact same side of behavior if you switch. You, you've, you've nailed it. It's a, it's a bit like if you're working out at the gym. You know, you want to get fitter and you're going to the you, you're going down to the cheap gym down the road. You can go to the most expensive gym in the area. If you keep doing the same exercises, you're going to get no fitter. And it's the same with the email platform. You've got to, it's, it's down to the way you're using it that decides what happens to your emails. So you've got to remember that the responsibility starts here and it's something that you want to take on board and you've got to stick at it forever. It's not something where you can just suddenly be a good boy or a good girl for a few days and then go back to your old habits. You've got to make sure that you're doing everything in the best possible way because Google and everyone else have got their eyes on you. Okay, so what do you need to do once you're on there and okay. you're thinking of doing the right thing? So I'm going to ask you a trick question, okay? Your email lists, because I know that you send emails to your audience and they're great emails and you get good responses. Would you say that your email list is an asset or a liability? I'm hoping it's an asset. Okay, perfect. So that is the correct answer. We want it to be an asset. But the thing that you have to be aware of is that if you're not sending your emails in the right way, your email list is going to be a liability. And when I look at a any any you know any random email list that I look at of any client, anyone who's used my software, then we will see that there are both assets and liabilities on the email list. So let's dig into what, why something might be an asset. And to do that, we've got to understand how Google works and what Google's kind of reason for doing what they do is. Um, because most people that use Gmail are not paying a cent for their email. You know, Gmail is a free service. And if, if the service is free, that means we as the users are the product. And that means that Google make their money by selling advertising that gets displayed to the users of Gmail. And the way that the adverts get displayed is when someone opens an email, an advert appears with it. If the emails aren't getting opened, Google make no money. So if you're sending out emails, but not many people are opening them, Google aren't making much money out of you and they're not going to like you. So... The, so what makes your contacts an asset are the ones that the people that keep opening your emails, they are the ones that Google are most likely to continue showing the emails to. And the more emails you get in front of people for Google, the more money they can make out of you, the more they're going to like you. And, you know, they're not just doing it from a pure money making point of view. They do want to make sure that their users have the best possible experience. So they're going to be showing the emails to their users they're going to show the emails they want to see and they're going to hide the spam. They're going to hide the stuff that, so, you know, let's say that I've been on your email list for years and I'll be honest, I don't always get the chance to read all of your emails. If I ignored all of your emails for a couple of months, Google would realize this and it would start moving future emails from you to me into my spam folder. Now I've not done anything to make that happen, but Google are just watching and they know that I've not engaged with you for a while. So they're going to say, Hey, Adrian clearly doesn't want to hear from George anymore. So Let's hide the emails from him. Um, and occasionally I will even see a message from Google saying, hey, you haven't read, you, you haven't opened these emails from this person for a while. Would you like to unsubscribe? And they give you a little link inside the Gmail app to do that. So Google are making it very clear that they want people. So, so that message will show up in your, uh, like when you open up the email? 
Yeah, ab- absolutely. You know, some, sometimes when I when I've gone into my Gmail at the top of the screen, there's been there's something that says, "Hey, you haven't opened any of these emails from X Y Z for a while. Would you like to unsubscribe?" And they have the little link that's tied into the unsubscribe link on that email. So they're they're pretty darn clever with this. Um, so they're giving a very clear message that they want you to only send emails to people that have opened something. And the typical rule of thumb is somewhere between two weeks and four weeks, maybe up to about thirty days is the is the engagement limit. If someone hasn't opened your emails in the last 30 days they're much less likely to open them in the future and once you get beyond 90 days then i've done a lot of analysis for a lot of people i even did this for frank kern at one point and we learned that between 65 and 70 days if someone hasn't opened an email in that time they're almost certain to never open anything again so the so the kind of the, the definitions that I've come up with is that the best assets on your email list are the people that have opened something within the last 30 days. Right. And, and, and here's something that goes with that. If you're not sending people emails within 30 days. Yes, that, that, that is a vital thing. And in this day and age, <clears throat> sending one newsletter a month, unfortunately, isn't going to cut it. Right. In an ideal world, you want to be sending at least one email a week, and that's only 50 a year. You can probably think of 50 things to say about your business in a year. And if you're really up for the challenge, I would say send something out every single day. Because, yes, you will get a few more people unsubscribing, but those are the folks that would never have bought anything from you anyway. If you're sending out great quality content, they're going to want to hear from you. So don't be afraid to send out lots of emails as long as they're only going to your assets. And that's the important thing. If you send lots of emails out and most people are ignoring you, you'll get a low open rate. Um, Google will see that. Microsoft will see that. Yahoo will see that. And they will penalize you. They will mark down your reputation, their little black book that they've got when they keep this dossier on all the different domains and what they do. And if you keep sending emails to people that aren't opening, then they will notice and they will penalize you. But as long as you're just focusing on those people that are opening, then you're good to go. Right. And and I I tell you what, in my uh, keep account, I've got about 16, 17,000 people, but my emails only go out to about 1100. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and that, I mean, at the beginning it was like, Oh my goodness, this, this is horrible. But I get a fifty percent open rate by those people, yes. so it's it's a big awesome. it's a big difference in the mentality. Um, and and I've had customers come up to me because, well, what do you mean I've got to get rid of those eight to ten thousand users on my list? And it's like, well, you don't have to get rid of them; they're they're gotten rid of already. Yeah, and 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 that's exactly it. I mean, so there's a couple of things to unpick there. First off, fifty percent open rate is awesome. Um, A lot of people at this point will start waving their hands in the air and saying, hey, but Apple changed everything a year or so ago. um, So you can't trust the figures. Um, So the thing to bear in mind there is between a quarter and a half of your audience might receive emails on their Apple device. But we don't worry about that. All it means is that Apple are marking every single email as opened, whether it's been read or not. So that means that our open rates are going to appear higher than they used to be. So if you're not getting 40, 50, 60 percent open rates in this day and age, you're not doing as well as you should be. If you're getting 10 or 20%, you're definitely not doing well enough. And it will be because you keep mailing these folks that haven't opened for a long time. So the better you manage your engagement and the the fewer people you mail, the higher the percentage. And that's what I call the virtuous circle because if you keep having a high open rate, Google will love you and they will keep delivering your emails to the inbox. So you're going to continue to get good results. If you have a low open rate, then Google is going to hate you and more and more things will go to spam and your open rates will, will plummet. So having having that is a good thing. And then also from there, it's also about making sure that you're continuing to send to the right people at the right time. And if people go beyond 30 days, then I'd say mail, if you if you mail in once a day or once a week, mail those, mail just the people that have opened in the last 30 days. Those are your best assets. Then you've got the people that opened between 30 and 90 days ago. They're still an asset, but they're they've kind of fallen asleep on you and you might need to wake them up. So those folks mail them, but not as frequently. So if you mail your list every day, then you mail the the the, the 30 to 90 day guys maybe once a week. If you mail weekly, you'd mail the other guys once a month. And once they get to day 90, you stop mailing them. You might want to put them through some kind of automated re-engagement campaign sequence where you can send them an email, say, hey, do you still want to hear from me? Click here if you do. And then another email that says, are you still there? And then another email that says, right, I'm going to unsubscribe you unless you respond to this email. I click or reply or whatever. Right now, now, at that point, they're gone. 
<clears throat> yeah. Now, if you're using a tool like Keep and some other systems have this, you, you can turn on your automated uh, list management features and they yeah, will automatically, they, they will automatically do the, you know, the expiration where you no longer send them. And as much as a lot of people don't want to use that, you know, what you're saying and what the experts are saying is, hey, you want those people off your list because otherwise you're never going to, you know, you're you're going to get worse and worse. Because once they've gone past 90 days of not opening or if they've never opened, they are a liability. And the more liabilities you've got on on your list, the more you're emailing, then they are silently killing your reputation and your sales every time you mail them. And I know there's a big FOMO thing going on here because... You know, most businesses invest thousands or tens of thousands of dollars in lead generation. And it's very difficult to suddenly let go of all these leads that look like they've got a value. But we've got to be honest. You've already nailed it, George. If they're nine, if they haven't opened something in the last 90 days, they are worthless already. And if you keep mailing them, you're into negative equity. You're going to be hurting yourself. So it's really important to focus on those assets because those are the folks that you really want to keep mailing. And the reason this matters so much is going back to lead generation for a second is most people do spend a lot of money on lead gen. You might be spending five, 10, $20 per lead, even more. Now, if I look at a typical client or someone who just used my software, then we've got something called the email smart score that I'll mention later on. But one of the things that we look at there is let's supposing that you've had a thousand new leads in the last month. What percentage of those leads actually opened an email? Because supposing you spent $10 per lead on those 1,000 new leads, that's cost you $10,000. Now, if only 50% of those people ever open anything, you're immediately wasting 5,000. Just like that, $5,000 set on fire. It's possible to get 80 to 90% of your new leads to engage. And if you're not getting that higher figure, you're wasting money, losing money, and you need to be doing better. Now, if you're lucky and you've got organic lead generation you don't pay a penny for it then maybe it's a slightly different game but for most businesses then there's a lot of time and money invested in lead gen and unless you're focusing on mailing your assets and doing all the other things to keep your email reputation squeaky clean you're going to be burning a lot of money on lead gen every single month and that's that's probably the 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 biggest crying shame that i see out there and this is why i'm so motivated to share this simple message about just find your assets and mail them and ditch the liabilities because that's how you're going to save money and and grow your business quicker. Interesting. Interesting. So so I mean what what are the basics because you kind of talked in general are there any like specific how to's that people ought to do like right away? So the the main thing I've talked about you know what we talk about here in terms of changing your behavior is a lifelong thing. You've right, got right. to do that. And it's, it's like you're, you've got to make this whole, what I call engagement management, be part of your DNA. Um, I mean, one of the reasons that, we're, that the business is called Email Smart is because smart actually stands for something. Um, the S is all about starting smart and just shifting your thinking and things like that. And a lot of that is, like we already said, think about your list as assets and liabilities. And then the M stands for manager engagement, which is what we've already talked about the a is the other really important one and that is authenticate your emails now this is something that's a one a one-off thing that you do when you first set up your email platform and if you've been around for a while you may have heard of things like spf which isn't about sunscreen it's about sender policy framework which is something that tells the world which email platforms you trust and there's something else called dkim which stands for domain keys identified mail it all sounds a bit techy so if you're not sure how to fix this yeah, then and, and by the way in case you didn't understand it one of the one of the things you said is dkim what was the other one uh, spf is the other one spf so those are two things it's it's real geek speak but it's how you set up your dnss and you're actually telling the world google hey I trust this person to send email on my behalf. Absolutely. And if you hear stuff from other people, I don't know who they are. Now, what we run into a lot is people haven't set up, for example, their DKIM records. Yes. And, you know, they're using, let's say, MailChimp or they're using, you know, some other platform and they haven't authorized MailChimp technically to send on their behalf, which doesn't mean they can't send out messages, but when the Googles of the world see that, they're going, hey, I'm not sure this is good. And that's exactly it, because the spammers can't sign their emails, whereas right. you as a legitimate, legitimate sender can. So you know, SPF is exactly as you said. That tells the world who you trust. And if you've got DKIM set up, every single email you send will have a digital signature that can only be compared with your domain. 
um, when that's the ultimate way of proving that you wanted to send that email. It's not someone spoofing you or hacking you or whatever. So if you get those two things set up, and it's like I said, it's a it's a one off. And if you're not comfortable doing it, then there's experts out there. You know, then you know, obviously George, I know that you can help people with that. We can help people with that. There's there's yeah. ways around this. Um, and because it's a one off thing, you don't need to be that expert in it. The engagement the bit I talked about, everyone's got to be an expert on that because. If yeah. you don't do that, your emails are going to go to junk. But the authentication is a slightly simple thing. And then just to quickly touch on the other bits of smart, the R is reputation is everything, which is just basically make sure that you're protecting your reputation. And the T I'll mention briefly because it stands for transform your content. And content still makes a difference. If you've got a whole load of nasty, spammy words in your email, then it's not quite as simple as it was 10 years ago, where if you had the word free or Viagra or something like that, then it would go to spam. These days, Google have got artificial intelligence that actually scans the whole message and works out what it is. Is it a promotion? Is it a spoof? Is it a phishing email? Does it sound legitimate? Is it a sales email? So we put it in promotions. So it's you know you can't game the system anymore, but you can still make sure that you're making the emails as likely as possible to be opened and read and acted upon just by being yourself. Don't try and game the system. Just be conversational. Send send decent, well-worded emails that look like you're writing to someone rather than some horrible, spammy, buy my stuff email all the time. No, no right. And, and for example, um, I mean, in my case, we talk about membership sites because that's the world we live in. But I'm working, okay. for example, um, <clears throat> with uh, a team that um, helps wineries. And, uh, you know... It, you can't be selling all the time, but I go, wouldn't you love to hear about wine smarts from wineries? So talk about wines, talk about, you know, the events, you know, people that had a lot of fun at your venue. Yeah, hey, just wanted absolutely. to let you know and, and make it, you know, engaging. And again, a lot of people are going to go, I'm not interested. Well, those people are not wine drinkers. They don't care. Uh, but some people go, hold on, note to self, this person knows about a topic I'm semi-interested in. Exactly. And, th and that's exactly it. Don't be afraid to share good quality content. You know, occasionally it's fine to send out a blatant offer and say, hey, I've got this amazing deal for you or whatever. But in between times, then just, yeah, lots of good quality content. And, as, and, you know, and I think you've talked about this years ago about, you know, plain text emails perform better than pretty ones yeah one with a header at the top and then with an announcement and an image embedded i mean nobody does that naturally in a real email exactly and that's the thing the emails need to look like they're from you to an individual person and no you know if you go onto your phone or your gmail or whatever you don't have a great big banner at the top and you don't have lots of pictures all the way through and and beautiful signatures and stuff like that because that's not what you do um and marketing emails should be similar to that there's a few exceptions but on the whole the fewer images you've got the better and definitely the fewer links and you know my, my biggest kind of you know, face palm moment is when i receive an email from someone and they've got all the little links to their socials at the bottom and you've got little icons for facebook and linkedin and twitter and youtube and instagram and whatever and each of those is a link and an image. And the more of those you put in, the more likely it's going, to, it's going to go to promotions or even spam. And let's face it, if you're sending out an email saying, go out and check my blog post or go and buy my stuff, do you really want to distract them sending off to your social media? If you want to send them to social, send out a separate email that says, go and check out my Facebook page and look at, you know, scroll, scroll past lots of kittens and puppies. But don't have that at the bottom of each email because it just it just distracts people and it's going to make more likely that your email doesn't get through. Go figure so, so, any, you know, any and, additional any additional advice you got for us i think though those are the main ones i mean you know, it's the thing the thing with getting emails into the inbox is like a massive jigsaw puzzle um and you've got to start somewhere so you start with the corners and the edge pieces and that's what i've given today and until you've got a good email smart score we'll talk about that in a second then the rest of it doesn't matter that much you know get your authentication done that's a one-off and then just focus on your engagement check your email smart score because that will tell you what good a job you're doing the higher the score the better you're doing it's as simple as that yeah so tell us about this because by the way he's got a really cool tool that's a great way to get started and it's it by the way this isn't just him spamming people this is just a really good tool to get you started understanding where you stand against you know these tools that aren't necessarily wanting to help you yeah and i think this is an interesting one the main reason i created the smart score was more as an education tool than anything else because 
people still don't understand this whole assets liabilities thing. So, you know, the, the, the smart score, it looks a bit like a credit check because that's, you know, that's what it is. If you've got a poor credit score, you can't get credit. If you've got a poor reputation for your email, you can't get them delivered. So all you have to do is you go to emailsmartscore.com and we'll repeat that in a second. And you just literally connect up your email platform, whether it's MailChimp, Active Campaign, Keep, HubSpot, you know, we, we support most of them. And this is a totally free tool and it just lets you connect your platform up. It'll do a quick analysis of what your email sending has looked like in the last 30 days. And then it will give you a nice, simple score. If it's anything below 500, then you're in big trouble. If it's up in the eight, nine hundreds, nine, nine, nine is a perfect score. That means that you've done pretty much as much as you can. And very few people get that. But that's OK. As long as you're getting the highest that you can, then you're doing good. And it's very simple. If you want to improve your score, stop mailing the liabilities, wait 30 days, your score will go up. It's as simple as that. And the higher your score, the more likely you are to get a new, the good new success with your new leads as well. And it reports on that. And it's emailsmartscore.com. Got it. That's it. Okay. I'll make sure to publish that when we uh, we put this online. Awesome. That is really cool. Because the thing is, this is, it's email is one of those things where you can really nerd out on this if you want. And if you've got a multi-million dollar business, then you need to, because a 2% change could make tens or hundreds of thousands of difference. But even if you've got a small list of just a few hundred or a few thousand, it's still vital to do the basics because there's nothing worse than when someone signs up to your list or supposing they buy your product for your membership site and that welcome email you send out goes to spam. That's your reputation in tatters right there. So it's really important to do the basics, no matter how big your email list is, because you need to get your emails delivered. You need to be you, those emails need to be seen either so you can make more sales or once you've made the sale it's to make sure you protect your reputation by delivering the people what they've paid for in your membership site or whatever. Great. Great. Well, Adrian, thank you for sharing your uh, smarts with us. Um, I it's think I, I know I, I, I'm, I, it's been a while because I know the last time I checked this was in the spring when when you and even were, um, were, were introducing this. But um, I think it'd be great for everybody to give this a try. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you for the tool. It's a pleasure. Great. And always happy to help. Great. Hey, thank you very much for your time. Thanks.